All right, well, so it's 12.30, so we'll get started. Um, thanks for joining us today and joining us for this session, which is Attract and Retain Employees with Transportation. We have Katie Blaine here from Rural Health Network of South Central New York. She's a Transportation to Employment Coordinator. Um, so just a few items. Please keep yourself muted throughout the presentation. If you have a question, um, please throw it in the chat box, or you can unmute yourself um, at the end of the presentation. And it is being recorded, so you'll be able to watch it at a later date if you missed something. Um, so without further ado, take it away, Katie. Okay, great. Hi, it's nice to meet everyone. Um, I'm Katie Blaine. Uh, like Mary said, I'm the Transportation to Employment Coordinator um, with the Get There Mobility Management Program, um, which is part of the Rural Health Network of South Central New York. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And I actually had a few questions for participants. Um, and if you don't mind answering, I guess in the chat, that would be helpful. Uh, so let me share the screen. All right. And can everyone see my screen okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. All right. So yes, the session is attract and retain employees with transportation. Okay. So um, I wanted to start out, like I said, with a couple questions. I'm curious. Um, if anyone on the call has had trouble recruiting employees or if you've experienced any employee turnover. Um, and, you know, if you don't mind sharing your answers in the chat. Yes and yes. Okay. Okay, great. Not great, but that's what I, that's what I suspected. Um, so transportation may be a factor. This session is called Attract and Entertain with Transportation, of course. Um, so as you may know, transportation, um, individuals may not be able to apply for a job because they fear that they won't be able to make it to a job because of transportation. They don't have funds to pay for transportation. Um, and they might not accept a job offer because of transportation. And then you have those individuals that get a job and they're really ambitious and feel like I'm going to make this work somehow, some way. And sometimes it doesn't always work. Um, sometimes they don't find a carpool ride and sometimes the cost of public transit is just too high. Um, so as you know, employers, um, <laughs> um, so as you know, um, employers are also impacted by uh, turnover and retention um, and the barrier that transportation poses to employment. Um, turnover is costly for businesses. According to the Center for American Progress, um, it costs around 16% of an annual salary to replace the cost of a low-wage um, employee. And a mid-level employee costs about 20%. Um, of their annual salary um, to recruit and replace. Um, so besides costs associated with recruitment, interviewing, and training, um, employee morale and productivity might be affected by turnover as well. Okay, so Get There has a transportation to employment program, which I oversee, and we remove transportation as a barrier to employment by providing safe, reliable, and sustainable transportation to employment strategies that help program participants achieve long-term stable employment. So what we can do is we can help broaden your employer labor pool and increase attendance and retention related to lack of or limited transportation, which saves businesses valuable time and resources. Um, just to give a little background about TEP, we launched in August 2018 in the city of Binghamton as a pilot project. And due to the success, uh, we have since expanded to Broome, Shenango, Otsego, and Tioga counties. Um, we actually started operating in Shenango County last year in 2020 in January. So it's been about a year and a half that we've been in Shenango County. And although COVID has taken a toll on the number of referrals that we've received, um, 
and subsequent people that we've been able to assist with transportation. Um, we've been able to provide assistance to nearly 200 people and that's across the four counties. And between 50 to 60% of those individuals have been employed for 90 plus days. And I'm going to talk more about that, but that's something that's really key and integral to the program. We don't want um, people just um, keeping it, holding on to a job for a few months. We want this to be a long-term sustainable job. Okay. <clears throat> so our, our transportation to employment program has um, two main components. So the first is the voucher program. And there's kind of two pieces to that, to that program. Um, so the first is short-term transportation assistance. So we can provide assistance in the form of bus passes, taxi rides. We have a network of volunteer drivers, fuel cards um, that can be for a personal vehicle or for a carpool. The important thing is that we look at the most cost-effective approach to getting to and from work. Um, and really what we're doing is we're bridging the gap between those first few days when many individuals are unable to afford the cost of transportation at the start of employment and those first few paychecks um, when folks can start um, getting some footing and able to save money for transportation costs and then pay for those costs on their own. Um, I will at the end of the presentation put the online referral form in the chat. I don't want to risk stop, stopping the screen share at this, at this time. Okay, so we have the short-term transportation assistance. Um, and that is backed by a long-term transportation strategy. And basically what that means is that while people are building their earnings, we work with each person to make sure that they have a long-term sustainable transportation plan to get to and from work. So basically that just means that they're able to pay for employment. Um, and the goal is to maintain employment long-term. Um, like I said, we don't want to set anyone up for failure. Um, and I'm thinking of a situation where um, Get There is providing, say, assistance with a taxi ride, which can be extremely expensive. The individual doesn't have any other form of transportation beyond that taxi and then ends up losing that job um, after Get Their Assistance ends. And that is absolutely what we want to avoid. Um, Assistance is case by case dependent, but typically on average, um, we provide assistance for around two months so that people can really, um, really start building up their, um, their funds so that they can pay for that transportation to maintain the job. Okay, now looking at um, kind of taking a step back in, you know, keep the TEP voucher program in mind. Um, we're, we, I just want to spend a couple minutes talking about mobility management. So what is mobility management? Um, it's basically managing mobility options. So it's looking at mobility from a systemic and also system to customer level. Um, and what our goal is, is to improve the reach, efficiency, and affordability of available transportation services. And the key word is really available transportation services. Um, so I just want to run down um, the different mobility management options briefly. So um, the first that I think probably comes to everyone's mind is vehicle ownership. And if you can own and maintain a vehicle, that is great. Um, however, the cost can be um, prohibitive for many individuals. Um, just to give you an idea, according to AAA, on average, it costs $773 per month and just um, just over $9,000 a year to own a vehicle. That's a lot of money. Um, and a lot of times, I think when people think about vehicle ownership, we just think of gas, you know, how much you pay each week to put gas, gas in your tank. And you have to think beyond that, vehicle repairs, um, insurance, registration, all, all of those good things. Um, the other thing just to kind of point out is a lot of times the individuals that we're working with um, may be purchasing older vehicles that could be unreliable, they could be unsafe, and they could um, 
require costly repairs. The next is private transit. So that includes things like taxis, Uber, Lyft, and it is an option. And it's, it's an option that uh, we do utilize with our voucher program. However, the cost is extremely high considering the cost of how much someone is earning um, in their paycheck. So with our voucher program and, and just in general, we really encourage if anyone is starting out um, with private transit with a taxi, that they are quickly shifting to something that's much more affordable, like rideshare. And we'll talk, we'll talk about that in, in a minute. Um, and something I, I want to point out um, that's not always um, not always discussed is that sometimes um, people have to quit a job because they are deciding between are they going to pay for rent and groceries or are they going to pay for transportation? Because unfortunately, with a private a private ride, um, sometimes your entire paycheck is going towards um, paying for that taxi, which is unfortunate. Um, the next option is public transit, and it's cost effective. Um, but as you know, Shenango First Transit has restrictive hours and inadequate reach in rural areas. Um, biking and walking, we can kind of put in the same category. This is a really great option. It's great exercise. Um, unfortunately, it might not be an option for all rural residents. If you live and work in, say, in Norwich, that might be great and it might work for you. But if you're in some of the um, outlining areas, it, it probably isn't an option. Another thing to think about is inclement weather, which we experience um, for several months each year in upstate New York. Um, there could also be a safety concern with lack of sidewalks or bike lanes. And that brings me to ride share. So for many people without access to a car, public transit, ride share, which simply means carpooling or van pooling, can be a cost effective method to maintain a job. Ride share can help boost attendance, reduce commuter stress, and attract new talent. Okay, so employee carpools. <clears throat> Get There can help organize and support formalize employee carpool programs. Um, we can provide employee transportation information, support. Uh, we discussed the TEP voucher program, um, that short-term transportation assistance, um, and also travel training. And just for anyone that's not familiar, travel training encompasses all mobility options. So it can be education on something like crossing the street, um, using a, an app on your phone to um, order an Uber or a Lyft, taking public transit and kind of everything in between. Um, there's also a really great resource. It's the 511 New York Rideshare Portal. Um, it is free to use and you can sign up as a driver or as a passenger or both and search for carpool partners. The benefits of employee carpools are shared transportation costs, reduced commuter stress because you know how you're going to get to and from work, um, and employers can offer things like preferential parking and other incentives to give, to give a little edge. All right. So next, I want to talk about the Get There van pool. So this is another rideshare option. So Get There actually owns uh, commuter vehicles that are used to transport employees to and from work. We can seat up to 12 people, including the driver. Um, I'm just going to grab a drink. Hold on just for a second. Thank you. Um, the cost is kept at a minimum due to our shared... Um, the shared cost of the service. So it's split between get there, employers and passengers. Um, commuters can put up to $270 in pre-tax income towards van pool costs through the commuter benefits law. And I just wanna touch on the law um, a little bit. So it's been on, on the books since 2016. It's available for for-profit and nonprofit employers with 20 or more full-time employees. And they provide the option of using pre-tax income 
uh, income tax and social security slash or FICA to purchase commuter benefits. And that can range from transit to rideshare, van pooling, for instance, um, et cetera, up to $270 from their paycheck each month. Um, obviously the cost of the commute is taken out before tax. So that means it reduces um, employees taxable income, meaning that they're taking a little bit more money home um, in each paycheck. And what that means for employers is that they can save money in reduced payroll costs. And you know, obviously it works best when um, a program like such as uh, employee van pool program is, is utilized with maximum participation. Another thing I just wanna throw out there and I'm sure everyone has seen in the news um, that we might be in for some higher gasoline prices if not gasoline shortages um, due to the Colonial Pipeline being shut down after suffering a cyber attack last week. Um, as you can see in the top right corner, there's a picture of me and actually our first um, van pool driver. We partnered with United Methodist Homes Hilltop Campus in Broome County to launch our first employee van pool program in January of 2020. We helped um, United Methodist employees travel um, just under 6,000 miles to work across 296 days. Um, Ron Patty is the executive director of UMH and he had told us that he looked into providing a similar service but found that partnering with Get There cost pennies on the dollar in comparison. Another thing I wanna mention, you may or may not be aware, Willow Run Foods, which is located in Broome County's Industrial Park, actually owns and operates their own van pool. And they advertise, every time I see um, job opening for them, they advertise that they provide transportation to and from work. Um, and it's a quite robust program. And that gives them a competitive edge. All right. So something that's really important is making sure that people are able to get to and from work, even if a ride share arrangement, a carpool or van pool falls through, if public transit isn't, isn't um, working that day. And we offer a guaranteed ride home program. And it's not necessarily just a ride home, it's a, a ride to or from work. Um, but that's something that's really important to us. We wanna make sure that we don't want employees to be stranded and we don't want employers to be stuck with, you know, in the case of a van pool, upwards of 10 people being unable to get to work. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then just briefly before I open it up to questions, I just wanted to touch on Get There's other programs. So as I mentioned earlier, Get There's mobility management program is, um, Get Their Mobility Management is a program of the Rural Health Network of South Central New York. And the Rural Health Network's mission is to advance the health and well being of rural people and communities. Um, <clears throat> Get Their offers a variety of programs that removes transportation as a barrier to health care, food, and employment. We have a call center that operates Mondays through Fridays from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. We have a team of mobility and transportation advocates that are there to provide information and support um, and referrals if needed to callers. We have a connection to care program and that is a non-Medicaid program that helps folks get to and from non-emergency medical appointments. We are offering COVID-19 um, vaccine transportation. Um, we were very busy in March and April with COVID, COVID vaccine transportation. And for any businesses on the phone, um, <clears throat> we um, are able to transport uh, folks to and from an employer, which um, we know that sites are becoming more readily available. Um, but we can transport groups of individuals from, say, your business to a site and, and back to work again. 
we have grocery store and food delivery, transportation services, our call center staff assists with medical answering service. So for anyone that does not know, medical answering services, MAS, is Medicaid's uh, transportation manager. So that's for individuals also going to non-emergency health care appointments. We have travel training. I know I touched on that earlier, and that's really very comprehensive education from anything from um, using a crosswalk to, um, to using public transit to getting into a taxi. Uh, we also have a really great feature on our website um, called the Trip Planner. And I, I have our website on, up on the screen. And that's a really nice, it's, um, it's a little different than what you would um, type into Google in that you, you do put your, um, uh, your, I guess your starting destination and your ending destination in, but it can give a variety of options. So you can search by, um, by taxis, for instance, um, if someone is looking for paratransit, if someone is a veteran, it will come up and um, really hone in on those transportation um, transportation options for you. Um, <clears throat> so um, there was a question about volunteer opportunities. Um, uh, are there volunteer opportunities to help people get to places of employment? Um, yes, there are. So. Um, we actually are partnering with a national um, volunteer transportation, the National Volunteer Transportation Center, um, VTC. Um, they're actually based in Watertown, New York, but their program is um, in upstate New York. It's also in New Hampshire and a number of other states. And um, you're able, what you're able to do is you sign up um, with them and you're able to volunteer as a driver um, in your community and you can choose your own hours. You are reimbursed for, um, for mileage at the IRS rate. So um, that is another opportunity. And what I can do is I will throw um, that link in the chat as well, how to sign up to be a volunteer driver. Um, so that's it. Um, again, my name is Katie and my contact information is up on the screen. Um, I'm going to stop screen sharing and open it up for questions. Katie, Katie yeah. this is Bill. Um, I'm, as you know, but maybe some on the call don't know, the director of the Get There program. And I wanted to add a couple points. Um, sure. Uh, first, uh, you know, the, your last comment, the volunteer driver program, um, you can sign up directly on our website for that to become a volunteer and, and get more information. But overall, what I wanted to share, you know, um, for many years, I've been in hiring positions and, and supported employment in that. And often when interviewing someone, you ask the question, you have reliable transportation, you know, can you get to and from work? And, and all of that. And, you know, common answers are, yeah, or, uh, you know, I, I, someone's going to bring me or um, I'm going to buy a car as soon as I get my first paycheck. And all of that really is, um, you know, probably unrealistic. Not many people are going to be able to buy a car after one paycheck. And the cost of having someone bring you to and from work adds up really quickly when you figure you're doubling the, the commuting cost. So, um, that's really the point of developing this program. And one of the things we're looking for is a shift in um, you know, the employer's mindset. You, know, you can take the position, why, why should I worry about, or why should I invest or become involved in getting my employees to and from work? Most of them are able to do that every day on their own. And it's just the, the few that have that struggle. Um, but Katie mentioned um, Willow Run and their rideshare program and how they have actually invested completely in this. Um, they pay for the vehicle costs, the operating operation of the vehicle, insurance, all of that, pay a driver to drive and do not charge their employees who take advantage because they recognize the value of this to their workforce. Um, Katie talked about the cost um, you know, of training replacement people. Why invest in that cost of, you know, maybe up to 20% of an annual salary if an in individual that you're training isn't 
got that sustainable transportation plan. So working with Katie on developing that and you know maybe some early transportation being provided by Get There helps get them, you know, get you a stable employee. Um, and then the last, the last thing I just wanted to mention is the guaranteed ride program. I don't want to be misleading in that, in that anyone can just call the call center and have a guaranteed ride home if their car breaks down or their ride pool or carpool or something falls through. You actually have to be working with Katie in our program to have that plan in place. So really, you know what to do if those situations occur. There's a, a strategy in place and we have provided, it maybe we've provided pre-approval for a cab company to take you home if, in those circumstances, but it has to be set up in advance and not just this, oh, I just got off my midnight shift at wherever and my ride hasn't shown up. I'm going to call the guaranteed ride home program from get there. So I just wanted to clarify that and now I will shut up and let Katie answer your questions. How many volunteer drivers um, do you currently have? That's a bill question. <laughs> um, currently we have 15 drivers, but um, we're going to um, expand our recruiting efforts now as we have gotten on a little bit on top of the COVID situation. COVID really uh, had a strong impact on volunteer transportation and that um, many of the drivers just, you know, put their volunteering on hold. Yeah, I just want to mention, um, I put several links in the chat if anyone's interested. So there's a link to the transportation to employment voucher program referral form. Um, there's a flyer that has information about all of Get There's programs. Um, there's just a brief description of each program. Um, <clears throat> there is um, how to sign up to be a volunteer driver and then also a link to the trip planner. So hopefully that's helpful for folks. Yeah, I didn't realize all of the, you know, resources that are available. And flyer's great to outline all that. Did anyone have any questions or comments or do you think that this is something that could be helpful? I would ask that um, because this is really a small group that if you are aware of employers we should be reaching out to in Shenango County that may not be on this call. Um, you know, we, we have had conversations with some of the employers. Um, we, are, we have more coming up, but um, I do think that many employers may not have heard of our program and really understand um, how they could benefit from it. So please share any contact information that you may know of regarding that. Mm -hmm. yeah, and we'll absolutely have this as a resource here at the chamber if anybody reaches out, so, you, know, you know, send your way um, if you're having transportation issues with their employees. Thank you. Yes, Shane, they will be um, available the recordings of all the presentations that we can share. If there aren't any other questions, we can end the session early. Um, thank you for presenting um, the great resource for Shenango County. And coming up at 1.30, we'll have Removing Roadblocks to Employment. It is the student panel with students from DCM BOCES. Um, so if you're available, you can um, Click that Zoom link for that presentation. Thank you. Okay.